This is a story of one of the world's most horrific humanitarian disasters. Hundreds of thousands of innocent people, civilians, bombed in their own homes by their own government. The scary situation that uh, the Nuba Mountains is in is they're on the border, and so the borders have not been completely determined yet. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of oil mm -hmm. and gold. There's no any kind of help, no medicines. Children are dying every day uh, for the disease like malaria and other. Good evening and welcome to Studio 12. I'm Tamara Banks. As you just saw, I was in Sudan recently, my fifth trip to the region. Uh, hearing a lot of it is that a lot of people were coming over to fix Africa, uh, and n nobody was coming over to really understand and learn what was happening in the communities. Uh, how do we get students and community leaders to come and, and listen to what the community leaders in, in Uganda and Rwanda are saying? You know, Colorado and Haiti are thousands of miles apart. How did you get involved in this, and, and what pulled at your heartstrings to even getting Engaged. Well, we have several adoptive agencies, agencies that are involved in adoption. Talk about some of the conditions, um, Dr. Eric, about how I understand your team operated on a uh, dining room table at some point. We were on the ground for about an hour, hour and a half, and um, Dr. Bruni came up to me and said, you're going to be ready to do a surgery in about an hour. In about an hour. According to UNICEF, before the quake, Haiti had 380,000 orphans. Some estimate the number of orphans could now reach close to one million. I still remember where I was when I heard that a plane went into the World Trade Center. And this was a similar thing, you know, my, my phone went off and it's like a bomb went off at the Boston Marathon and it's like, no, this can't be happening. You are right there uh, alongside elite athletes, the everyday um, athlete. And so how, how many thousands of backpacks can you check? We're riding with the Iraqi army doing checkpoints. We've just left an area not far from Kirkuk. What was the key factor you think um, in counterinsurgency in, in Iraq that really worked, that really turned the tide? Well, there were a number of uh, if you will, big ideas that guided us. The Iraqi doctors I talk with are thrilled to have this kind of mentoring. You call Chris a, a hero, why? Chris is a teacher. He is uh, like our teacher and our professor. For these kids living in Baghdad slums, today is like a holiday. They're gleeful, mugging for the camera like children do everywhere. But this mother, named Sadia, is worried about what will happen when the visits from the Americans end. We thought that you will no longer come here since the area was transferred to the Iraqi authorities. While you'd think the donations would help these families get back on their feet, they seem to be stuck here, relying on visits from these American soldiers. What will happen when the U.S. forces pull out of the country? Imagine holding someone's life in your hands. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. Holding 400 lives in my hand in this box is Navidium, cattle vaccine that will be used to free 400 slaves. More than 100 people have been freed today. These men and boys will be processed with their names, their ages, and soon be given the tools that they need to start a new life, a free life. 